There are many things and circumstances in this life that are put here to grow us, mold us, and make us stronger. To become the responsible adults that this world needs. We find ourselves stepping into these roles like the people before us. We go on to have the careers that they told us to dream about that were ideal and maybe essential. And then one day, you encounter a person with a life story and testimony that completely erupts every idea that you have about what your life should be. And this one life completely expands your perception on what your life could become if you're brave enough to truly exist in the desires within your own heart. I didn't know that becoming a performer or a speaker could be a possibility for me. I didn't know that I would be able to be of service to the many people that listen and watch my videos and resonate with the way that I communicate life. I had to do a lot of research and training and developing a craft to communicate in the ways that I do now. Communication never came naturally to me. It's something that I unknowingly trained for for a large portion of my life. And to have the clarity that I have now, it wasn't me waking up one day and deciding to quit my job the next. It required me not only to change my habits, create a discipline, develop a skill, but I had to change my mind and the way that I viewed my life. In this video, I will give you three mindset hacks that allow me to walk into my manifestations a little bit more intentionally. A few months back, I couldn't wait to get here so that I could be able to share all of the things that actually work for me and bringing my manifestations closer. And I'll be honest and say, in the reality of existing in the frequency of walking in my divine path, I can't promise you that everything is at my fingertips. I can't promise you that I have it all, even in this reality. but to complete the task of my purpose, I am in an abundance of, and I would like to share that with you all. And if my words have ever connected, and if you've ever resonated with any of the videos that I've made, maybe the tips that I share with you today will be the light bulb switch that you need to walk further and a little bit closer to your manifestations. So, of all of the manifestation video concept theories, this is one that I'm most excited about because it's grounded, it's the truth, and this is as real and as raw as I can really get. So I'm excited. Welcome to the Raw and a Half podcast where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. Start expecting miracles. As much as I pride myself on being a grounded person, an earth sign, a Virgo, a realist, a critical thinker, an analyzer, this way of being wasn't keeping me open to receiving miracles or allowing divine intervention. I could understand the concept of being a creator of my own life really well. I knew I needed to work hard for my desires. All of this was from one angle true, but too much of this was the ego's need to be in control of everything, even how things would unfold, which is completely outside of my control. I was too rigid in my beliefs to make it all happen on my own. And in order to be truly used, I needed to stretch my perception of the outcome being larger than what I could ever imagined. Because to do something only in benefit to myself was small. Having an intention to be of service to others was a higher vibration, thus making myself a better match to what I actually wanted. But more importantly... I needed to exist in the expectation that, in order to do the task of servicing others more efficiently, an influx of support had to be on its way to me. My needs have to be met first so that I can better meet the needs of the community I serve. And when I stir that into my mind and really let it marinate and settle at the bottom of my heart, I was a magnet to all of the things I wanted and needed. I knew I had reached the other side when I saw my past ideologies and others and how it has affected their ability to receive as well. 
For example, I was speaking to someone the other day about an opportunity at work and casual conversation. This person was much older than me and has much more experience of life, but I was on the optimistic side of the scenario, where they already assumed a negative outcome. We both could have benefited from this opportunity at work. Both of us agreed on ways it could have helped us, but one of us existed on a blind faith that it would offer what I needed, and the other pulled from a bank of experiences and had a history of disappointments that resulted in him assuming no fruit will come from this opportunity. Just like I said in the beginning of the video, we have life experiences. Some of us have more than others, and they ground us. It's not a bad thing, but we have to know when it can be useful and when it's actually blocking us. I realized that if I too allowed life to harden me or continue to harden me and change the ways that I viewed opportunities, I would close myself to a large window of positive outcomes in the same ways. Some of us build guards that keep us from the very things we want to welcome into our lives. I've done it for so many years, out of fear and disappointment, but here's something that made a difference for me. When we decide that there's something, anything in life that we wish to manifest or we wish to have, we must also open ourselves back up into the uncharted territory of receiving. We do it not because we potentially won't experience more hard things that grow us or potentially disappoint us but because it is our birthright to receive an abundance from a source that wishes to provide for us once we allow it. Let me just cut it to you real. I don't know when it happened or what they put in the food that made people afraid of being seen trying or afraid of people witnessing you open to receiving something or afraid of disappointment. Like, it's strange. You have to want things to get disappointed. But that shouldn't stop you from wanting things. Look, I'm from around the way. I'm leaving here with something, you know? And if God prepares a table before you for me to eat, I'm going to eat. And I'm going to look hungry. And I'm going to be hungry with no second guessing because I've starved before. So what? People are going to see it. So what people feel cringy about other people receiving what they're destined to? That shouldn't stop anyone from eating. The people who are uncomfortable with what you have on your plate aren't looking hard enough at their own plates. So I would practice opening yourself back up to believing in miracles again, believing that you can receive more in this life, that you're worthy of good things. In fact, you're due for a win. And see what you allow yourself to have. See what you allow to unfold in your life. Your desires are already existing somewhere in the present moment, but are you allowing and attuning your frequency to match that? What changed for me is that I had to stop investing the bulk of my energy into the future. I needed to invest more of that into the present moment so that I could exist already into the version of myself that can call those manifestations towards me. If I wanted those things now, I needed to channel the wisdom of having it now so that when it arrives, I am already prepared to receive it. When people entertain the idea of being delusional, it in a way seems like a performance or not a full investment, not as much as you actually need to have. Because you feel the thing and then you go right back to walking in the life you aren't fond of. Or you could potentially say that you believe the thing, but saying it doesn't actually mean you believe what you're actually saying. It's almost as if you're trying to convince yourself. That's when I think of when people are um, making delusion popular. I think delusion has the same amount of power of wishing on an eyelash. It's so small. It's so fickle. You don't know where it's going. When I manifest, I carry it until it comes. I speak its normalcy into my life on a day-to-day. -day. I develop a schedule now around the ways my schedule will change when I get the specific thing. I make space for it now in my mind and in my heart. I claim it for myself casually before 
anyone else can claim it for me. That's how I know it's mine. And an exercise I did often, or I still do in the shower, is this thing that I like to call the and then what concept. I think I saw it on a TikTok video once before and I tried it consistently for about three months and it actually brought things closer to me. You speak as if you have your manifestation already and say, and then what? This challenges you to go past your desires and in the feelings of already having the thing. But because it's already yours now, in what way will your life be different or easier? And what will you do with this ease or this resource? Will you use your freedom of time to finish your playwright? Are you supposed to be writing a novel? Are you supposed to be in a different country, living and existing in a completely different life? Just whatever it is, how does it feel? For me, and the one that I used is, I've used my creative abilities and communication skills to become a successful entertainer. And then what? And this kind of puts me so into the future that I'm able to curate a life a little bit more intentionally. What am I going to do once I reach this destination? You know? And I get really creative. It also keeps me prepared so that when things come into my orbit, I know exactly how to hold it. I know exactly what to do with it because it was always supposed to be mine. And that's maybe that's a little bit too far ahead into the future for some. Maybe that overwhelms some, but it does something for me. It's a little bit deeper than just dreaming about a thing. The things that you've seen, what you want, the things that you want to create, they come from somewhere. Maybe someone else has the path that you are also being called to walk. Are you willing to align yourself with it to be present with it or not? And if you don't, the world will be okay, but you probably won't be okay. And that's the biggest problem. Not existing in your calling and your purpose it will almost eat away at you. When you have a desire to do something that you truly feel is within your purpose, it will keep calling you. Some of us answer, or some of us live in the regret of never answering at all. But once you take this call, it's very hard for you to go backwards. Nothing is ever the same. And going forward will be like a free fall into something you can't see and it will require a different level of faith to it's okay to be in fear but to have gratitude for the breeze on the way down it's a scary and unknown place but the next thing you know you're going to open your eyes and be carried into a place that you never imagined possible i know that sounds like a complete fairy tale but I'm telling you it's real it's just it's not this fabricated theory of what happens when you follow your dreams it's just like sometimes you just have to take a step forward and be okay with what falls apart when I decided that I wanted to amplify my voice and take my podcast more seriously or be more intentional about it, that step forward caused every step behind me to completely disappear. I had nothing in the investments that I was making before. All of those opportunities that I had ran its course. I wish I could say it was a peaceful and pleasant departure, but because of how I am and how easygoing I can be and how tightly I can hold on to things that no longer serve me, I literally had to be chucked and thrown out of certain timelines in order to move forward and be here. You're hearing me speak, not because I just enjoy it, because it's genuinely all that I have. And the reality of that, living in that, it is very scary. But the only thing that makes me feel less afraid is if I just continue to do what I was doing before, which is this, continue to do the thing that makes me feel most comfortable and it's just this, so I'm just going to keep doing this. And I guess we will see in a couple of years where this pans out. It's, it's okay because it's good for the plot, 
but also I needed to be free of being in certain energies that I had to adopt just to survive. If I'm a woman who wants to do more for my community, it didn't make sense to continue to pretend and exist in places where people have a natural bias towards me or the people that look like me or the people in the communities that I want to serve. Why would I allow that type of energy to be the source of my income? What does that say about me and my integrity? That didn't make sense, so that was the first thing that needed to disappear. But I'm saying all of this to reassure you and confirm you will go farther in places you belong, whether you recognize those places or not. This podcast and my channel has opened up so many doors for me. It's completely new and uncharted territory. But because I allowed myself to say yes to the call and marinated in it, and allowed it to completely take over my being so that I can walk and show up, the more I embodied it, the more my life looked like what I embodied until there was nothing else left from my past and I became exactly who I was called to be. And when you are called, you may not know every single chapter of the book that you're meant to write. You're not going to know the exact details of the business that you're going to produce to help millions of people just yet. It takes one step after another and every step that you take, you'll get pieces to a puzzle and you have to be okay with not necessarily knowing it all to take a step forward. Embodiment is key. It's not just the things that you tell yourself over and over again. It's channeling the presence of the version of you that already has it and acting upon that every day. Yes, people will not understand why you're acting this way. You will have your mantras and a strict diet on what you can hear, what you can entertain yourself with, what you consume. People will speak ignorantly towards your structure. Let them... A person's understanding of your mission is not required for you to complete it, so don't waste your time convincing others or trying to defend this season of your life, or even take others with you. I had to be okay with leaving people where they are, not because I didn't love them or I felt like they were not a part of me anymore, but at the end of the day, they are not responsible for my mission and my path. And if I continue to use their lack of support, their misunderstanding, their trauma, their pain, all of their baggage for the reason why I didn't pursue my destiny, I will leave this life and have a meeting with my father and feel like I missed an opportunity because I could have did what I was supposed to do but instead I allowed the emotions and the baggage and all of the things that really didn't matter get in the way. I wanted this to be the life where I got it right and I didn't use the emotions and all of those things as an excuse to why I didn't complete my mission here. I've always been a different person. I've always been a different thinker. And I've always read about, you know, powerful thought leaders. I've been diving deep for a very long time, you guys. For a very long time. And... At a very early age, people took it as a joke. And that's okay because there was a point in time where speaking like this wasn't normalized. That's okay. Uh, you know, when you're speaking like this and you're so young, especially when you're in the South, you're not going to make a lot of friends. People are just going to be like, you're kind of weird. So I was just someone that was kind, that was nice, but I didn't have a lot of people close to me because... It, 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 it would have just got really crazy, really weird, really fast. So I was okay with the jokes. You know, I realized that people will take things as a joke and they're going to keep laughing until they take a beat. 
and stop laughing long enough to realize that they should have been taking notes. I sat back and I realized everything that I grew up watching, knowing, and entertaining myself with before this awakening that I had, it was becoming a part of my psyche and I didn't want that. I didn't identify with that. I saw my life and my connections through the things that I digested through black culture and I'm not going to say that I don't appreciate it, but there was just something a little bit more there was something deeper that I could have touched. And when you're in the real world, outside of being amongst people in your community and meeting so many different people with different inner worlds and different walks of life, the realization that we had a responsibility and the free will to change it and watch what we digest mentally and physically left me curious. And I was like, hmm, if I start from scratch and completely only invest in the things that feed me good things, what would I become? How would I walk in my life? It didn't mean that bad days didn't come, but if I did it right, when they did, I wasn't going to completely think that my life was over. I knew when to use energy to create instead of destroy. And find real control. I think when I studied acting, and I really started to dive into different characters and different choices, and I started to develop a skill of communication, I would use this as research for so many years. Learning what's a good tone, what's not a good tone, having full autonomy in the moment to make certain choices and people would assume that I would be making a mistake but I would mean every word I was just okay with committing to the outcome of the decision I made by saying a specific thing when you're that intentional about the things that you're saying things that you're listening to how you choose to show up you are an extremely powerful person and I was like, hmm, this intelligence, this awareness, I want to try to do it into my own life and see where I end up. And you know what's so funny? I was thinking about uh, different actors that I, I look up to, different entertainers that I watch, and I was looking at the Terrence Howard interview, of course, because he's buzzing, there's a lot of things, and everything makes sense I guess like when you are a, a performer for a very long time I notice it uh, this about a lot of actors and a lot of people that I've met that are phenomenal actors they are very intelligent people they're very smart they're very intentional about everything and it's when you really get deep into it and where you when you recognize how intentional a person is when they speak it it's amazing. It is wild. And I got a bug of that when I started to dive into storytelling and expressing myself and using my voice. You can create any life that you choose by developing a character and telling a story that resonates so soundly with you that you commit to the outcome of whatever that is. Drake is an actor, but he decided that he wanted to make music and he committed to that outcome and he became a powerhouse. I am telling you, maybe one day I'll, I'll talk about like the power of acting or the actor that prepares or just the things that I've learned about developing a character in general and how it's affected my life and the ways that I you know, build connections, the ways that I communicate, the ways that I study. And it's, I get shaky just thinking about it because of the passion, but like, it gets freaky. It gets really deep. Um, anyway, I knew when to use energy to create instead of destroy. I allowed the energy to exist inside to save more energy for the life's work and the mission that I had. Our emotions are such powerful catalysts for change. One emotion could either destroy your life or create something wonderful. 
every negative emotion I used positively added more gems to my metaphorical crown. And it's given me something to hold as like a tool under my belt of like, I know I can get through this because when this happened to me, I turned it into that. And alchemy is an amazing thing. Having an outlet, how are you using the things that happen into your life and turning it into something that could work for you? Everything that happens in your life is energy. Either you're going to store it and allow it to make you sick or you're going to mold it into something that could benefit you. Manifestation is just doing something with the energy and power that you already get from life. So we talked about embodiment. Embodiment is key. I wish I could like express it to you more. You know, I want you to find the difference between embodying something and pretending. I think acting changed the ways that I manifested so much because I took myself out of the performative, I'm an actress. Instead, I just wanted to be something different or I, I realized that I had, there was a difference between performing and acting and being someone else or being something or being the person. And when you put that into your actual life, crazy things happen, crazy good things happen. I don't want to scare you too much, but, um, hmm, yeah. I think to conclude, what I really want people to grasp is that it's something deeper than repeating the same affirmation over and over again. I think I want to relay it to acting because like it truly is, you know, when you're watching someone act and you listen to them and you're like, oh, they're just reading the lines. They're not really acting. They're just reading a script. And when people say affirmations over and over again in a way to convince themselves of these things that they want to come closer to them. If they say it for long enough, they'll say it in the right tone. That'll eventually match if they say it long enough. You know, if you do it repetitively, okay, you believe it. But then you meet people that are really acting. It's, it's, it doesn't feel like words on a sheet of paper, even though they came from there. It's like, it's really within their bodies. They really are who they say that they are performing to be. It's in them. They're being this thing. When it comes to manifestation, that's literally how you have to show up. And maybe what you're trying to get seems far away because you don't really believe the words that you're saying or you're really just reading lines it's not connecting inside you don't you don't believe that you're worthy of everything that you actually want the minute that you embody what you actually want to call for, forth to you is when things truly start to get there, embodying this reality through meditation and allow your nervous system to rest in this pictured reality that you design will make things much clearer. And for me, I'm a, I'm a very clear creative thinker as I think clear images come into my head that's something that I've always been able to do and I think it's a skill that I developed when I was very young but if imagining doesn't serve you and if when you close your eyes it's maybe harder for you to see things because it is a practice that you have to have script out the and then what theory that I talked about and allow your words to take you on a journey of that version of yourself and then Set a timer on your phone and every day at a specific time, read that back to yourself and allow things to unfold 
as it should, to call your desires near and be ready and okay with things potentially collapsing to bring you closer to what that is. Allow things to disappear to create more space for this new thing that you're calling into your life and then show gratitude by reading your script over and over again as you're in excitement for what's to come to you. And um, let me know how that feels. Like, I don't, I know, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I'm a, I'm a smaller YouTuber, I'm a smaller speaker, but I truly believe that what I shared with you all today is key. It's, it's such a strong, it's such a strong activation tool. I hope you guys are using it in the right ways and safe ways because it works. I don't know, there's something magical about acting and performing and being, and you can use it in so many different ways. Um, so I'm interested to see how they all pan out for you, how they pan out for us, because I'm literally sitting in the middle of it working out for me, but I got, I'm like only there halfway, and I'm like, you know what, let me just talk about what's working for me now, and maybe if I share it with you, it'll call some people for it, so you can give me a review of like how it's working for you, because I'm telling you, like not to convince you guys, like I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I'm trying to convince you guys that this thing works, because there's so many things that could potentially work for people, but I was someone very young, like, okay, I'm 29 now, I'm turning 30 in September, trust me, I'm, I didn't grow up where everyone was talking about this, I grew up where, like, you either literally had to get, like, super deep into a YouTube spiral of, like, randomly coming across these subconscious videos, and then finding the books, and going to the seminars, and reading the things, or like, I mean, that was really literally all that you had. And um, to be that, so that was years ago, to be, to finally put it into practice at this stage of my life, it didn't just instantly work out for me. It took a lot of time. And now that I finally understand and grasp the concept, I hope that I'm able to communicate it in a way that is thorough so that you guys can trust that I'm not giving you any, like, this ain't no McDonald's type of manifestation thing. This is something that if you truly allow it to sit and marinate, it will do wonders for you. I'm just gonna let the work speak for itself, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you all so much for making it to this far into the video. I hope that what I said resonated with you. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you all in my next one. Bye.